So you've got your mobile internet gear. Maybe you have a router. Maybe you have multiple routers. Maybe you have mobile hotspots. Maybe you have an antenna. Maybe you have a big antenna or lots of antennas. So what next? How do you put this all together? How do you, do you decide where to install it? How do you install it? Should you get uh, a professional to install it or should you use a DIY and install it yourself? Today's video, we're going to talk about these topics at a high level and go through a plan of what you should do once you get your gear to use it effectively in your van, boat, or RV. Hi, I'm Andy with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and today we're going to go over some of the considerations that you need to keep in mind when you want to install mobile connectivity gear in your RV, van, or boat. Now, there's different approaches, and a lot depends on the specific circumstances that you're in. It depends on what sort of RV, boat, or van you might have. It depends on what gear you have. Uh, it depends on specifically your need and your travel lifestyle. Do you want to install this gear permanently so it stays there all the time? Maybe you want to install it semi-permanently. So if you're a part-time RVer, maybe you want to take it out in parts of the year and put it in when you're actually in. Or maybe you don't even need to uh, install anything at all. If you are using, for example, mobile hotspot devices like this, or smartphones and you rely on these portable uh, devices for your connectivity, then you may not need to do any installation at all. A mobile hotspot device or a smartphone can sit on a table next to your laptop and provide connectivity. You can put it in a window so that you get better signal. Or you can even use a small portable antenna like this to uh, get some signal enhancing. However, if you're going to use uh, more advanced gear, and especially gear that doesn't have a battery and is going to require power constantly to work, like a mobile router, and if you want to use more advanced antennas and gears, especially antennas that are on the roof or larger antennas like this one here, then you're uh, going to probably want to take what we call the tech cabinet approach. Now, what that means is that basically you want to centralize all your connectivity gear into one place in your vehicle or your boat. Now, what doing this does is it gives you several advantages. With everything uh, in the same place, you only have one place to go if you have a connectivity problem and you need to troubleshoot. Everything is in one place. It makes uh, running cables between different pieces of equipment a lot easier. If you need to take uh, wires or cables outside to the roof of an RV or say up on a mast on a boat, then uh, there's one location there where all that can come in. So there's a lot of advantage to advantages to centralization. Now, the tricky part can be is deciding where you want to have your tech cabinet, where you want to centralize all this technology into one area so that it will work effectively, be organized, be efficient, where you can access it, but it's not going to be in your way because you definitely don't want it strewn all over your table so that you can't get work done. So as far as locating your tech cabinet, it's going to very depend on your particular circumstances, your gear, and your RV. However, the two requirements for centralizing your system are there has to be power there or the ability to get power there. Because most of this equipment requires either AC or DC power, you're going to have to have some kind of power source available. The second requirement is going to be the space, the space to hold all of this. That is going to depend on the type of equipment you have. A large router like this with large paddle antennas is going to take more space than, say, a smaller router with smaller paddle antennas. 
or you may not use these antennas at all. Maybe you use an external antenna, in which case you have to account for uh, cables and where those get routed to, etc. So you have to have enough room in the cabinet or in whatever space you have for your tech cabinet, your centralized location, in order to put all the stuff and put it in a logical place where you can still access everything that you need to access. So those are the two primary factors. However, there are other factors that you will need to consider depending on your circumstances. Not all these factors may apply, but some of them could. So we'll just go through them quickly here at a high level. Now the first is the construction of your RV. If you are, for example, in an Airstream with a metal shell, or you have an RV that has foil insulation, or you're in a metal boat, the metal can block the signal for cellular and Wi-Fi signals. This can cause problems uh, getting the cellular signal if your antennas are on the inside, or getting Wi-Fi on the outside of your RV if your Wi-Fi is inside. So that's something you'll have to factor in to the location of your tech cabinet. Related to that is outside access. If you want to install antennas on the outside, uh, either up on a mast on a boat or the roof of an RV, then you'll need to get the wiring and cabling for those antennas to the outside in some way. So you'll need to consider how you'll do that and how you'll route ca cables from those antennas to the equipment inside your tech cabinet. Another factor that applies with any electronic gear is ventilation. If you cram too much equipment into too small a space, you could have overheating problems and equipment shutdowns or burnouts. And especially with battery operated devices like mobile hotspots, you can get the lithium batteries in here to degrade over time and even swell and break. You'll also want to consider what other gear you have. You may have this connectivity gear you want to centralize, but maybe you want to centralize other networking gear, like network attached storage, or maybe your audio visual system, uh, etc. So you'll need to take all those pieces of gear that you want to put in there into account. Next is ease of access. So you want to be able to access this and configure or troubleshoot when something goes wrong. You may need to change SIM cards or whatever. And if you have all this gear buried deep in the back of a cabinet that you need a step stool to get onto, uh, then you're going to be annoyed and have problems. So you need to balance that trade-off of having it accessible and available to make changes and SIM swaps as well as to troubleshoot your gear. You should also plan for upgrades. A lot of people start out simple, that's something we recommend, and then grow their system over time as their needs grow. So if you plan in the future of maybe starting out with just using paddle antennas on a router, for example, and then moving towards a bigger antenna or even a rooftop antenna, make that plan now so that you're not going to have to move your tech cabinet when it's time to get that new piece of equipment. The last factor you want to consider is aesthetics. One of the reasons why we recommend a tech cabinet is because it hides the gear away while still being accessible. It also tends to obscure those annoying blinking lights. So once you decide on a place for your tech cabinet and you have your equipment assembled or at least ordered, you may want to decide whether you want to install this yourself or hire a pro to do it. Now here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, we do get many requests for referrals to companies that specialize in installing mobile internet equipment. And unfortunately, there really aren't any companies out there that do this. Uh, mobile internet is still a fairly niche uh, market segment, and there just aren't a lot of uh, people out there, uh, especially nationwide, who specialize in installing this type of gear. However, any competent RV or marina 
uh, tech shop should be able to install these with no problems. Um, they're not that much more difficult than the other kinds of uh, installation and maintenance that those types of uh, shops will do. Now, you may run into some reluctance to uh, install equipment that a shop doesn't specifically sell, and they may not want to install uh, equipment that they are personally not familiar with. So they don't want to be liable for screwing something up during an installation. So it may be a challenge to find someone who can do it for you. So you'll need to do a lot of research and your own homework to determine uh, if there's an installer out there or a tech shop that can install it to your uh, specifications the way you want and do a quality job. However, going the DIY route is certainly an option. And for anybody who's uh, a little bit handy, it's really not that difficult. The most uh, concerning thing most people have is uh, drilling holes in the roof of their RV and properly sealing them. Or the same thing with a bow getting from the inside uh, to the outside up onto a mast, for example. And more complex things like running cables um, and configuring equipment and things like that. But those are all doable. There's lots of information on YouTube and forums, RVs, boat forums, that has uh, tons of information and guidance for the do-it-yourselfer uh, that can make that a lot more approachable. You can also enlist the help of a friend or uh, somebody who's knowledgeable uh, in the RV or boating community. So DIY is definitely an option, and we find that's what most people do is that they find that they're comfortable uh, enough to install the gear themselves. And the advantage of that is really that you learn more about the gear that you have. Um, and it helps educate you so that when there's a problem down the road, it's easier for you to solve it on your own. So to conclude, this is really a high-level overview of this topic listing some of the factors that you need to consider when you want to install mobile internet gear in your van, boat, or RV. Uh, there's a lot more detail and you can drill down uh, much deeper on these topics. And our companion article, which is linked below that goes along with this video, provides some of those details for our members. And our mobile internet aficionados, our MIAs, also have, in addition to that, access to our forums and other interactive areas where they can ask questions of our team of experts as well as uh, other members, many of whom have gone through this process themselves. So if membership is something you're interested in, I encourage you to check out our link in the description below to learn about our membership options. And finally, don't be intimidated by installing your own gear and we encourage you to learn online, learn as much as you can, consider the factors that we've discussed previously in this video, and take a step-by-step -step approach so that you can build, install, and maintain and use your own mobile internet system, one that meets your specific needs and keeps you online for what you want to do. Thanks for watching this video. There's more at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and here on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.